still actually the only person I feel like I really saw this report that remember that Spotify was like, hey, we're not going to pay artists under a certain threshold. And then I was watching you when you reported that, well, they actually lied about that. They were still going to pay and they were like, there's there's a lot more nuance to it. Can you mm -hmm. explain your <laughs> your um you know disgruntled nature with the, the way things went and then why and and then how things actually are? I'm I've just been consistently disappointed with journalism. I mean, that's in all arenas. Without straying from the music business though when it comes to the music business journalism is just dismal because i understand that the writers are writing for a, a broader audience so those people don't want to hear about the minutia of intellectual property rights or the different royalty streams or um mechanical licensing and what the uh, mandatory minimums are and all that. So or not the mandatory minimums. That's, that's going to prison. Um, statutory, <laughs> statutory. That's what I meant. Oh boy. Uh, so then they end up writing these catchy headlines that they know are going to capture people's attention. So they'll make up a headline that reads something like Spotify will stop paying artists who do not receive a thousand streams on a song and they just ended at that when in reality the only royalty stream that they can legally withhold is the sound recording aka the master and then you start digging deeper and if you know you know that this isn't really going to affect spotify's major stakeholders i.e the labels who own these vast catalogs of sound recordings and they have are you know they're they're not worried about a thousand streams because even their legacy catalogs are doing well. Uh, so when we get these little articles that are written by people who might themselves not understand the music business at a high enough level to write articles such as these, then that trickles down to the creators in the social media space. They start spreading the narrative and. It's, I don't blame our, the, the, the music community. Be, and, and it was honestly, for me, I was, I was extra upset because I got it wrong. Because we're having, I, I was questioning how this was legal. I was questioning how a platform can just decide not to pay legally um, guaranteed royalty streams just based on some arbitrary stream number. I, and I kept questioning that. And the answer was always, oh, we don't know. Until somebody, and I wish I had the names, someone on Twitter was like, no, nah, you got it wrong. They are still paying mechanicals and, and performance royalties because they have to. I'm like, yeah, but that's what I thought. But the article said nothing. They will pay nothing. Mm -hmm. So there was a Billboard article, and I forget the author's name, but she was one of she, she i believe she was the only journalist who reported accurately on this and that's what was frustrating to me because this isn't the first time this has happened you know now that i'm in the music business and i'm living and breathing this every day i'm looking at these articles i'm like this is just clickbait with no substance at least if you're going to write a, a clickbait headline have the substance in there and it's just it's lies and deception. Spotify doesn't care. They're not going to correct it because who cares, right? They, they're not here to educate artists. That's the crazy part about it to me, though, like how much they don't care. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that was a very clear moment where I could tell, like, yo, they don't. It doesn't matter. People are disgruntled. People like clearly don't mess with them. People say they want to hop off, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, nope, not a peep. <laughs> hey, just want to drop this quick mention. If you're looking for help in blowing up your music and your career as a whole this year, at the beginning of every year, we open up to find new artists that we want to work with and continue to grow throughout the year, which has resulted in many of the big moments that you hear us talk about. So if this time we've opened up where you'll be able to see how we approach things from ground zero, digging into your brand identity, 
translating that into content, advertising, and full-blown campaigns that result in streams and real fans. And it's only $1 at www.nolabelsnecessary.com 30 days. I'll put a link in the description below. But beyond that process, we actually have ways to speak, get to know you, watch you grow throughout your process so we can lean in and offer extra advising on how to navigate what you're going through in real time. So if you want some real help without having to sign your life away, check it out at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash 30 days. Either way it goes, best of luck to you and your career. Yeah, because they're making their money off the consumers. And and yeah, that's the other thing. You have so many artists, individual artists saying, you know, we got to get off Spotify. Why can't why can't we just get off Spotify? All it's going to take is for us to get off Spotify. It's that's not what it's going to take. It was like all the people who are like, well, just just send your customers, send your fans to Web3. What? How our fans and our customers don't have crypto wallets. Yep. What are you talking about? They don't. I don't even understand that stuff. You expect these people to understand it? There's a lot of misunderstanding of business in that conversation. I think so we much. Go go a lot deeper on that side. But first, before we get too far against uh, away from it, I don't understand it as well as you do. You just said they did stop selling. I mean, still did stop paying out for the sound recording. So how is that legal? Why is that legal? And is that something? Obviously, it's a small amount, especially when we're talking about a thousand streams. But like, can you like, what's your thoughts on why? Like, give me something there, because I still don't get it. This this is a little bit above my pay grade. But as I understand it, there is no legislation protecting sound recording rights holders insofar as a guarantee of royalties is concerned. So if you, for example, steal someone's sound recording and start duplicating it, that's copyright violation, uh, copyright infringement. But if you just set a threshold for payment on that particular copyrights exploitation, then that's different from, say, the mechanical royalties, which fall under the other copyright side which is the underlying composition copyright because that actually had legislation uh codified so i think it has to do with the fact that the major corporations have an interest in you know the, the record labels they are owners of sound recordings and so they want 100% of the power to do what they want with the sound recording. So if we were to place legislation on that minimums and this and that, that would hurt them. And they have tens of billions of dollars so that they would never advocate against their own best interest. Whereas on the underlying composition side, publishers, for example, will um, and, and PROs will fight and advocate for higher royalty rates because that benefits them it also benefits the artists whereas with the labels you know if they own the master they do whatever they want having that control benefits them more uh, copyright infringement but if you just set a threshold for payment on that particular copyrights exploitation then that's different from say the mechanical royalties which fall under the other copyright side which is the underlying composition copyright because that actually had legislation uh codified so i think it has to do with the fact that the major corporations have an interest in you know the, the record labels they are owners of sound recordings and so they want 100% of the power to do what they want with the sound recording. So if we were to place legislation on that minimums and this and that, that would hurt them. And they have tens of billions of dollars so that they would never advocate against their own best interests. Whereas on the underlying composition side, publishers, for example, will um, and, and PROs will fight and advocate for higher royalty rates because that benefits them it also benefits the artists whereas with the labels 
you know, if they own the master, they do whatever they want. Having that control benefits them more. Wow, what's up? It's Brain Man Sean. And if you like this clip, you can listen to the full episode on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you stream your podcasts. But if you want to keep watching, we've placed a video that will be so useful for you conveniently above. Go ahead and click that link.